When I actually first started what I'm doing right now, Acceleron, what we do is that we basically develop the technology to transform old lithium batteries, like the ones from laptops and other things, into energy storage for other applications. It didn't start with that idea. It actually started with electric bicycles for the UK market. And I entered it in a series of pitches and competitions, got negative feedback, got positive feedback. The most important thing was to actually listen and understand the pieces of insight that people were giving you. You don't usually like to hear the negative feedback, but oftentimes there is something very interesting in it. And um, one thing that happened, um, I entered the CRL last year with the e-bike idea. It was basically um, retrofitting existing um, old school fixie bikes with electric powertrains, rebirth of a classic as I called it. Um, but um, after the pitch, the, what the, the guys were saying is that the battery you were designing for this bike actually has a lot more potential than the bike itself. So I would actually advise you to focus on that. Sorry, you didn't get in. Okay, so I took that piece and I started to focus on it. And I looked at the reuse potential for batteries and the different avenues you can get them from and et cetera, et cetera. Lots of positive and negative and all sorts of feedback, but feedback is the most important thing. That's what I want to kind of focus on in the beaten path to kind of getting where you want to go. You, you really want to listen to what the insight that people are giving you. You also have to learn how to kind of interpret what is good and bad feedback in terms of what is useful. And that's something that only you can decipher because you kind of have to have an underlying vision as to what you want to achieve. Because people will always tell you to listen to others, but you, you yourself have to be able to decipher what is relevant to what you're trying to achieve. So of course you kind of have to have an underlying idea of what you're trying to achieve. Very bare bones, so it doesn't need to have numbers or figures or anything like that. It's the bare bones concept of what you want to achieve. For example, Acceleron, our bare bones thing is that we want to reduce the barriers to the access to essential resources. So one of the ways to do that is to make something like energy, which is an essential resource, cheaper. So we're looking at making energy storage from used batteries so that they're cheaper. So that's how you kind of see the, the business model developing. But it starts with a very basic underlying concept. And that, when, once you have that underlying concept, you can actually start to debunk relevant information from things that are not relevant. Because everybody will have something to say about what, you, what you're doing. And you actually want to hear what they're saying. Once you have that kind of underlying concept as to what you're trying to achieve, you can then kind of strip away what's valuable, kind of put aside what's not, and you develop. Because it, it's a slow and very iterative process. Um, and the most important thing about the process is that you really want to get out there. And this is where this comes in. I was in a pitch recently with this lady here who has a brilliant idea. And um, one of the things I got when I went to that pitch, this is with the idea I have known, this was what, two, two months ago, something like that? Yeah, they were saying that I need to work on my routes to market, routes to sales, something I never thought about because this was the first time I went to a pitch with investors. So it's that kind of information. You, didn't, you don't really want to hear that because you really want to say, yes, we'll give you some money. But they're like, these are a couple of things you need to work on. You take that, you cross match it with your kind of core ideal, what you want to do, and you develop based on that. That's one of the, kind of one of the most important things that I kind of want to hammer down. In terms of, let's see, what tends to be an important discussion? Funding. Yeah, everybody wants to know about that. Um, now, most of you, I'm assuming, will be in a student position or recent students. Um, one of the best opportunities that students have is your access to resources in the university. It is invaluable. It does not seem like it right now, but you, the amount you have to pay for the services you get here for free is insane. Um, a good example, when we had to make some prototypes for Acceleron, we were 3D printing using an external service. Now that I'm back on campus, I get to use Brunel's professional 3D printers. The quality is even better than what I had to pay for, and I get it for free. Another important thing in terms of funding is that you have access to competitions that are specifically for students. Um, I think that's particularly relevant because the competition at this stage, everybody is kind of on the same level, more or less. Some people will have explored a bit more, some people will have explored a bit less. 
the collaboration you get from speaking to people in rooms like this is really invaluable. You learn a lot of stuff. You, you learn people that you could collaborate with in the future and you build a network. I think that's the most important thing. And then the third thing is that you will probably never get any easier funding than student competitions. That's the truth. So while you have the opportunity to actually apply for them, um, I think some people that I know can tell you about some student competitions that were quite good. You should definitely explore them. They are a bit of work. I, I probably applied for going towards 40 competitions within the last 11 months. Uh, my friend Sol Vega, she does bump mark. If you ask her how many competitions she enters in a year, she will tell you upwards of 100. That's just how you play the game. You identify them, you send them out, and you, you just kind of keep it rolling. You don't even wait to hear from them. Sometimes you don't even remember you applied. You just literally have a to-do list with all the student competitions or relevant competitions to you, and you send them out. The most valuable thing from these competitions as well, the feedback. Always ask for feedback. Um, any competition that's worth its grain of salt will give you proper feedback. So that's basically my advice. To sum it up, basically, if you're now developing your idea, talk with people, just kind of share the idea, even, even though it might be in a fragile state. Don't share the secret sauce. Because, yeah, IP is important. Um, but just share the idea so that you can get some feedback from persons. Because this is really how ideas start. Um, learn how to discern what is relevant advice from what is not. So that's where you kind of cross match everything with your core values. And then the third thing is to push yourself out there. Get into a lot of competitions, really, you know, kind of get out there. And it works. It, it takes a lot of time, and that's why I didn't want to speak about the successes and Acceleron has done this and Acceleron has done that, because there's a lot of little iterative, annoying steps in between. And those are more important than the, the successes. You get there eventually, but you really have to be able to do the trenching and the, the, the hard work and stuff like that. It's more annoying than it is really hard or impossible. It's just stuff that you really would not want to do. I spend more of my days filling out forms and writing emails and going to different places than I would like to spending in the lab. But that is the nature of it, because you're building something, so you have to develop that network. It doesn't exist right now. But that's kind of what's exciting about it as well. Um, well, yeah, she was just inquiring what are the, the most important things when you're presenting, doing a pitch, anything like that. Um, for me, I tend to have um, three things. Well, basic. Um, one, you want to be comfortable. Wear something that makes you feel very comfortable and confident. Confidence is really important. Smile. It sounds really silly, but smile. You, you'd be surprised because these are people, they will be watching many of these things throughout the day when it comes to pitches, competitions. So they want, a, they, the first thing they actually will acknowledge is your personality. You want to smile, you want to exude your energy. That's the most important thing. And then the, in terms of the information, keep your content simple straightforward, very easy to understand. You can keep the, the extra details and stuff like that in the background, but in terms of when you're pitching, keep your information very simple and very easy to understand. Um, usually summarize things in threes. Um, the brain doesn't remember things when it goes beyond three. So one, two, three. If you can get them to rhyme as silly as it sounds, people remember that more. Um, like what I did with Acceleron, we say that um, Reduce waste by reusing uh, batteries to produce um, accessible products for many societies. Reduce, reuse, produce. People, people get that kind of stuff. So it's a play on words, but it's very effective when you're doing pitching. Because remember that these are people who will be sitting and listening to many of the presentations just like yours. So you want to stand out. Simplicity helps a lot. Smiling helps a lot. And exuding energy, if that's the word. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That's what tends to help a lot when I mean, you do pitches and stuff like that. You'd be surprised how much it helps. It's, it's not often the best idea. I've seen people with some extremely brilliant ideas go into pitches and they just weren't successful because they just didn't have the presence. They weren't convincing enough in the presentation because you don't have a paper to show, please don't go with a paper because that looks really bad. Like, hey, this is what my paper says, what might not? You actually want to be able to communicate it effectively while you're speaking.